हिंदी उपनिषद सीरीज पेशेंस इन स्पिरिचुअल पाथ वन ऑफ द इंडियन मिस्टिक्स पल्टू दास सेज एवरी आर्ट टेक्स प्लेस इन इट्स ओन टाइम सो वाई गेट इन पेशेंट नो मैटर हाउ मच यू वॉच इट the tree comes to fruition in its own time also it is said grass grows by itself in this light why is there so much impatience along the spiritual path is impatience an essential part of human growth is pesh impatience an essential part of human growth in zen you are asked to learn something and then you are asked to leave it for the same number of years when you are learning something it is not part of you it is external it is coming into your consciousness and trying to make the grooves it takes a while for something to make grooves in your consciousness and once it has made groove into your consciousness it becomes a part of your own groove look at the conception of the child the spoon comes from outside in a congenial environment it interacts with ovum something that was external when it interacts and then the process of growth begins then the child the fetus first and then the child grows as the part of mother's own growth there is no difference but the sperm comes from outside the seed comes from outside a thought or a message or that you are learning is comes from outside when it is allowed to settle within your own framework it becomes a part of your own growth you brought you bring a plant how does the plant the seed they are grown in flower pots or somewhere else and they are sown as it is thereafter when you bring the plant is planted in a, a smaller area of the soil you dig a hole into the place where you want to plant it and then you place the whole plant with the dirt into that space you water it the two environments one that was the one provided for the growth of the plant and the other that where you have planted have to become one and that takes time slowly and slowly the part of the dirt which you had bought along with the plant becomes the part of the greater soil where you plant the flower plant ultimately it takes a while 
in the same way you are learning something first the thought comes in simple thing you are getting a problem with your smartphone it has been said that anything that you have a problem for that there is a solution but you must know how to reach to that solution you google it your problem there may be a video most likely these days you have the videos available in the beginning you are not a trying not able to understand it but as you continue to use it that process which you were not able to understand becomes a part of your consciousness now most of you who are using constantly the phone if sometimes it happens your phone is being used by someone else and wants to open the email you can give the steps orally you will tell the person as you open the the screen slide it to the right icons will appear and in those icons now look for the icon for the email and when you click on to that the email page opens you go on the top you will see three horizontal bars you click on to that it will have many icons and one of that will be inbox you click the inbox and now you scroll downwards in order to get to the relevant email but in the first place it was not easy for you but as you continue to learn and it becomes a part of your own consciousness you can direct the steps and this takes a while so in zen they tell you to learn the art of archery or something else and then you leave it and then it becomes a part of your own growth just as that the soil that comes with the plant becomes the part of the major soil in the whole where the in your house where it is planted now something that was a alien a stranger becomes a part of your own growth so a thought whatsoever is the process becomes a part of your own this takes a while it is true that everything takes place in its own time however it is only half true paltudas says every art takes place in its own time so why get impatient no matter how much you water it the tree comes into fruition in its own time however this does not mean that you need not water the plant or you need not have to sow the seed the seed have also to be sown in time the water has to be given timely and in the right quantum only then will the fruits come in their own time so paltudas is saying what he is saying is only the half truth of the whole thing from the seed to the fruit is a long journey and certainly great patience is needed on the part of the gardener 
but the patience must not become laziness because the difference is very delicate between laziness and patience and very fine patience should remain always at the very core in its heart of hearts very impatient one knowing perfectly well that when the spring comes flower will come may become complacent that does not mean you have to forget longing desiring for the spring to come praying waiting for the spring to come wait but your wait should not be dullness on your part it should be a part of your own deep understanding the guest will come and one never knows when the guest will come but wait like a lover with doors open eyes fixed on the road as if the next moment is going to be the meeting with the guest on the spiritual path things which ordinarily appear contradictory become complementary be impatiently patient or be patiently impatient but both have to be together if you choose one there is danger if you choose one there is a danger patient alone is going to become laziness and impatient alone is going to become unnecessary anguish and anxiety they both are needed in and a balance is to be created so if so impatience keeps you longing waiting and patience keeps you from becoming tense and creating anxiety two things have to go together so impatience keeps you longing waiting and patience keeps you from becoming in tense and creating anxiety both have their own parts to play along this spiritual path it is only one who creates a balance between two will be able to attain to it patience should remain always at the very core in the heart of hearts very impatient one knowing perfectly well when the spring comes flower will grow and remember it is not only so about contradiction alone about many other contradictions like the same is true as well one has to be both together in deep harmony it is not about the gardener alone it is about the seed as well pantudas has forgotten completely the real question is about the seed not about the gardener because the gardener is going to remain the same there is going to be no growth is spiritual or unspiritual the growth is going to happen to the seed and if this seed is too patient it will die it will lose the very longing to live or the chest for living months will pass before the rains will come if the seed becomes too patient it will die before even being born their seed there needs a certain impatience on the part of this seed a tremendous desire to grow 
blossom and finally come to fruition. But if there is tremendous desire and longing for growth, it will happen in its own time. The two things is required. Tremendous desire to grow, blossom and longing for growth. But remember along the same time, it will happen in its own time. Your longing cannot bring a spring earlier or little sooner, but it can keep you awake so that when the spring comes, you are not fast asleep or dead. The seed has to continue to dream, desire and also has to remain discontent as it is. Seed is only a potential. Fruition is its destiny. The seed is a potential, remember, and fruition is its destiny as it is. It is only a potential, otherwise it is empty. The journey from potential to fruition is long and arduous. The journey from potential that the seed is to fruition that it wants to become is long and arduous. It requires both patience and impatience simultaneously so that you do not become complacent. Everything is going to happen in future. So it has to be alert, hopeful and aware of the unknown listening to the silent footsteps of the spring coming. Remember, the spring is coming only in silent footsteps. And on the other hand, it has to be patient because there is nothing it can do to bring the rains or to bring the spring. They will come in their own time. But you cannot remain complacent. So if the seed can keep a balance between patience and impatience, it will remain alive and it will also not go mad. Too much of impatience can make you insane. And at the same time, too much of patience can make you one of the living dead. Remember, the two things have to be in a proper balance. Impatience, if it is too much, it can make you insane. And if patience is too much, it will make you living dead. Thus both are necessary in right proportion. A deep harmony between the contradictions along the spiritual path the harmony between contradictions is essential. So they are transformed into complementaries. As such as you know, patience and impatience are contradictions. When they are put in a proportion, they are part of one process. Instead of contradictories, they become complementaries. Along the spiritual path, a deep harmony is needed with every step. A little imbalance, you will be lost. You cannot, just as when you are driving the vehicle, there has to be a balance between your accelerator so that and then the gas that is released. If less gas is releasing and the, it has to mix with the oxygen and the process of combustion takes place and that creates the energy to push the vehicle forward. So that which appears to be contradictory, remember there is nothing contradictory in a life. It is only the mind that he considers this and that as contradictory to one another in deep essence. Deep down, if you go below the surface, 
they are counted and pleased. They are part of one synergistic harmony. Remember, we are not aliens, nor as a strangers joined. We are bound to each other by a causeless force. It is the same five elements, the earth, the sky or the ether, the water, the fire. They provide the nourishment to an apple, to a fruit and to you as well. But based on your own inner qualities, you grow into a human being, a male, an apple grows in its own way. But both are living and the combination of these five elements comprise a world that often we associate with God. The word Bhagwan, it is composed of five elements, five letters represent five elements of which you are composed. First letter of the word Bhagwan, let's use the Hindi word Bh. The sound in English is like BH combined. In Hindi, this is a letter Bh. Out of this comes the word Bhumi. Bhumi means the earth, the first element, which is essential part of each group. Your human body is humus. Out of the association of ovum and sperm, the humus is created. Then comes the second letter in the word Bhagwan is wo. Is the sound like you can say W O V. And from this letter, Hindi letter, Wo comes Vayu. Vayu means the air element, the next element. But before that, one more let comes B. After that, G, that is sound of G. And from G, the Hindi letter G, comes the word Gagan. Gagan means ether or the sky element. So, Bha, Bhumi, G, Gagan, Wo, Vayu. And it requires a vowel, a sound. That is known as, that completes, that helps to give a meaning to a particular letter. It gives, it prolongs itself or makes it a softer. Bh, softer sound. Ga, again another softer sound. Wo is a softer sound, but here we need to give it a push. Wo. So then we add a vowel to give it a meaning. Wo, the sound of a. Uh. And that vowel sound, a, uh, represents an element known as Agni, the fire. So we got the four elements. Bha, Bhumi, the earth element. Ga, the sky or the ether element. Wo, the Vayu or the air element. A, the fire element. And the last letter of this word Bhagwan is Na. Na or the sound of N. It creates a word Nir. Nir means water. So the five elements, the earth, the sky, the earth provides the background, the sky creates the space, and in that the process where all the other elements attain to a union. So this word Bhagwan does not in any way represent or mean God as we traditionally understand. You are anything that is a combination of these five elements in a synergistic harmony is Bhagwan. The apple that you have in your hand or the grapes or the banana or the child that you have in your arms 
is a combination of these five elements. Hence, it represents, it becomes Bhagwan. Therefore, never consider anything as contradictory. Everything is complementary to one another. And spirituality is understanding that complementary nature, that we are part of this synergistic harmony. There is a power within that knows beyond our knowings. I teach you never to choose one. Always remain in a choiceless awareness. Both are yours. Use them and use them in such a way, in such a way that both create a beautiful music. You remember the various instruments, the percussion instrument, the bellow instrument, the wind instrument, the string instrument. These are the various instruments used in the process of creating a harmonious music. Your body represents these various instruments. So first, each instrument is tuned in with bellow instrument. Whether it is percussion, whether it is wind, whether it is string. Everything has to be tuned in with a bellow instrument. And what is a bellow instrument? Harmonium is the bellow instrument. Sometimes we do tune in with a single stringed instrument called Tantura. In your body, the solar plexus, its movement is horizontal, bellow like. It moves forward and backward. When you contract, your stomach goes in and when you exhale, the stomach expands. And this process, combined process, the two contradictory process becomes a process of harmony. The contradiction and expansion, out of this one process is completed, the breathing process and it now your lower centers have to be tuned in with this bellow instrument, the solar plexus. And then the heart center creates because of the chest, the breath that comes in. It is the wind instrument, represents the wind aspect of it because of the breathing. Then the throat center, the string. So when all these centers are in harmony with one another, you are embarking on a new journey. I do not ask you, I do not teach you ever to choose one against the other. Remain choiceless always. Remember choiceless always. Both are yours. Use them. All these instruments belong to you. And in a musical concert, first of all, each instrument is tuned in to the bass instrument. Remember your bass is your solar plexus. If everything is tuned in to that, tremendous harmony will come in. Shiva, in one of the most ancient most treaties, Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, responds to the questions of his concert Devi, who is sitting in a very loving gesture on his lap and with her head bent, slightly looking at the face of Shiva and asks certain questions. What is this wonderful universe? What is thy reality? Shiva could have given a philosophical answer, but he does not. Instead, in response to each question asked by Devi, that is her name in Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, she gives, Shiva gives a technique, and that is breathing technique. You remember breath becomes, it hammers your solar plexus when it comes in 
and then when it goes out it completes the cycle the expansion and contraction of the breathing it helps the solar plexus to remain active and it also helps in the process of emptying one of the nakshbandi sheikhs sufi raghavar dayal popularly known as chacha ji gave a technique of crying or sometimes laughter these are not two separate from one another they are complementary to one another they appear on the surface to be contradictory but deep down they are complementary too much of laughter leaves you with tears and too much crying leaves you in laughter it is used as a technique but in between there is one more point which he subtly left for the seeker to find himself is not that raghavar dayal was not aware of the third aspect he was but sometimes the master leads it to the understanding to become for the, the seeker to become aware of it and the silence that it creates the silence that laughter and the combination of laughter and crying that it creates is an important part to absorb the energy that's created by the combination of laughter and crying contradiction and expansion creates an energy within you creates a a kind of a dancing silence an overflowing silence is not the silence of a cremation ground instead a silence a dancing silence a silence which is overflowing three things the laughter the crying and the silence go together to create to become a great technique for the transformation he emphasize sometimes he will tell a seeker to use crying as a means remember crying clears you of the putrified emotions which are stored in your solar plexus and laughter hammers the solar plexus to become to release all that is there a great technique is used both are used use them and use them in such a way that they both create a musical a beautiful music a symphony in your heart it looks very strange to say but nothing can be done about the mysteries of life i can only say even if i appear to be very contradictory it does not matter certainly be patiently impatient it is a choice of a contradictory words and you remember it is the contradictions put together becomes a harmony certainly be patiently impatient or impatiently patient but be bold simultaneously and in that balance in that balance great transcendence will happen something that will happen something that will grow within you it will give birth to you the flower will blossom and the moment flower is blossomed its fragrance and beauty cannot be contained it must spread out and when that beauty and the fragrance it spreads out remember when it is spread it assumes the form of words the words become music they create a silence around the listener the words as these overflow these are overflowing out of inner harmony a synergistic harmony and they will create a groove into your consciousness so if you score this tawajjuh it can assume the form of words 
it can assume the form of silence. When it assumes the form of silence, it must create parallel words as message in you. And when it overflows as words, it must create the other pole silence. Word is one pole, silence is another pole. When word and silence merge together in a harmony that creates an energy for the transcendence to happen, when a proper balance of the word and the gaps in between, it creates, it helps in the process of transcendence. So sometimes through the silence, I create the words in you. Sometimes through the words I create the silence. Both seem to be contradictory to one another, but indeed words and the gaps or the silence, the peak and the valley, they stay together as complementaries. Life is a balance between contradictory things and a spiritual process of transcendence happens as a part of balance between contradictories.